LeBron, the numbers speak for themselves, but how did you feel tonight? Uh, <clears throat> after the first quarter, um, you know, I kind of, you know, the knee loosened up a lot more. Uh, my mind loosened up a lot more. Um, and I was able just to play basketball, but just decided to be back in the uniform, back on the floor with my guys. Missed them, you know, missed the game. And, um, you know, um, happy I was there to make a few plays to help us win the ball game. In your five games out, Anthony Davis has returned and been putting up numbers that have people calling him, you know, bubble AD. Uh, what, what have you seen as you've watched from the sidelines? Uh, the time that he missed um, brought back the hunger. Um, and it's that, literally that's that simple. LeBron, we've spent a lot of time, well, I guess when the games, the limited games that you guys have all been together about trying to figure out fit and, and, and getting everybody kind of together. Um, what, what's the message to a guy like Russ after a night like tonight? Um, booze from the crowd, tough night shooting, ends the game on the bench. What's the message to him? Um, I just told him to text me later. Um, I told him to keep going. I told him to stop second guessing himself during the game. You know, there's a couple of times where he had good looks. Second guess himself a couple of times where he had some drives. He had the drives and second guess himself. Um, you know, um, he's an instinctive player. Um, you know, and he should never, I mean, the, the, what he's done in his league, he should never second guess himself and put the work in. He's put the work in. So, um, you know, I just told him to just hit me later. And I don't need to harp on what I, what we need to say to him. I mean, he, he's, um, Big time player, and um, you know I have the utmost confidence in his ability. Um, you know, not only for this team but for himself individually. LeBron, when when you were warming up before the game, were you already pretty sure that that you were going to play tonight, or was there something you were trying to see how the knee was responding before you got out there? Um, no, I didn't feel that great in my in my, in my uh, pregame warm up, to be honest. Um, but I didn't feel as bad as the last warm up that I had in Charlotte. Um, the last time I tried to do something on the floor, that was the last time I actually did anything on the court. Um, I didn't feel worse than that day. Um, so just gave it a shot, see what happens. And we saw what happened. LeBron, how is Malik? Uh taking advantage of kind of the opportunity that's been presented kind of with the circumstances of this season. And then where does he fit in kind of on, on of the guys you need to get to where you, you want to go this year? It seems like he's really emerged as one of the most important pieces of this puzzle. Um, he's taking full advantage of, of this opportunity. I mean, obviously, and uh, every, every game he gets more and more comfortable. Um, he understands his, uh, his ability and what he brings to this team. He brings a, a, a knockout punch um, that, and to be completely honest, we haven't had in uh, on our roster since I got here. Uh, someone that can literally, if he makes one, it could be two, three, four, five in a row, and uh, and, it, and it comes in bunches. And uh, I mean, he's a big time scorer. But mo I think what's very underrated about his game is also a, a great playmaker as well. You know, with the ball in his hands, he um, you know doesn't make many mistakes, and um, you know is always in, in control. So um, he's going to be very key to what we. Hope to do, you know, going on the stretch and, and, and um, you know, for the rest of the season. You want to get a call from JR about that? <laughs> yeah, uh, Swish is one of those guys, too. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, Swish is definitely one of those guys who, uh, I mean, he did it in game seven in the finals, too, where he came in and hit a, a three straight big time buckets that we needed um, after being down at halftime. So Swish is definitely on that, on that, uh, on that list. So I got a question for you. Uh, in the time you were out, Tom Brady retired, and publicly we've seen you guys both motivate one another. Who knows what the relationship's like privately, but I'm curious if his retirement struck you in any sort of different way considering you were out with an injury and if it made you, <laughs> made you think about, like, hey, I still got a chance uh, to, to return. I, I personally was just, like, so in, 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 in shock when I saw it. Um, to be, I, was not, I was one of the ones that didn't say – anything when the first initial announcement came out i didn't retweet anything i didn't say anything because i wanted to make sure i heard it from him um and then when he came out his announcement i was like you know 
I mean, it's just, it's a guy who's kind of just uh, been kind of my motivation factor over the last few years, you know, seeing what he's able to do at his age and, you know, always, uh, you know, kind of being a leader of a team. And even at his age, people still gravitate towards him and gravitate, you know, you know, his energy and how he prepares and things of that nature. So um, <clears throat> small pieces, uh, small piece of me was definitely uh, left when Brady decided to retire. That's for sure. Say that again. The fact that you would be able to come back and, and you'd be playing more. Um, yeah, I mean, um, but I don't think it was a correlation. It didn't. It wasn't anything that was, you know, side to side. I mean, I, I listened. To, the man gave us uh, twenty-two great years, um, and uh, obviously, the numbers speak for itself. The championships speak for itself. But I just think the way. He, you know, when he got that starting job in, in, in New England, from the time he was a starter, the way he just carried himself as a professional, um, day in and day out, committing to the game was something that's just um, it's a remarkable thing, and um, you know, something I've always looked up to and uh, and respected. Uh, Trevor stepped up the last couple of games with, with Melo out, uh, played a season high 35 minutes tonight, closed the game. W what has he given you guys these past couple of games and, and what's kind of clicking for him since he had been out of the rotation? Uh, one, he's given us length. Um, you know, um, sometimes we play a lot of um, <clears throat> lineups where we have a lot of, you know, smaller guards. Um, so it's, you know, at times challenging to rebound I and mean, we have some, you know, some difficulties rebounding at times, but um you know, with, with, with T.A., I mean, in his 35 minutes, he had eight rebounds. Um, and defensively, he's always been great. I thought he did a, a, did a heck of a number on Julius. I thought Julius was great tonight, but he still just he kept his body in front of him, made him take tough shots. When he made tough shots, he still had a hand up, you know, in his face. And then you have to respect him on the other end because his ability to knock down shots, and he gives us space um, at his 6'9 uh, frame. So, um, the more minutes that he get, I feel like the more and more comfortable that he gets, um, you know, we're, we're a little older in, in age, you know, so, you know, the more, <clears throat> you know, minutes that he gets and, and um, it allows him to, to feel a rhythm. And when the ball touches his hands, he feels in a good rhythm. And I was happy for him. And uh, I told him, uh, you know, I was extremely um, happy. I was able to make that pass to him late in the game when he was knocked down at three. Um, just told him I trust him, and that's why, and that's why I threw it to him. Uh, LeBron, uh, R.J. Barrett spent time guarding you tonight, and he had a career high thirty six. I'm just, I know you follow the league closely. I'm, I'm curious what your impressions are of him as a young player, especially after. Going I mean, well, he started the game off. Uh, you know, I think he had seventeen in the first quarter, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, you know he had some big time shots down the stretch. Obviously, the three to tie it at one eleven. But the full court, the, the dunk and transition, um, you know, and uh, he just hit key shot at the key shot tonight. Um, I've been long, I've been on RJ for for quite a while now. Um, I was in Toronto during the summertime. Um, I think he was a high school junior or senior, and um, and it was a call to uh, my agent. Rich, well, he wasn't my agent at the time, but um, that there was a kid in Toronto that is uh, possibly next. And um, it was off season. I was in Toronto, just having a good time in Toronto. Um, but I was going to the gym to get some workout, some work in, and they um, called Rich and asked, could he join? And uh, I was like, absolutely. Um, so I've been knowing him for quite a while, and I followed him, you know, throughout those last few years of high school, and obviously off the Duke, and now as a as a, as a Nick. So, um, you know, he's just, I mean, he's a young, he's young. So he's going to have, you know, you're going to have your, you know, bumps and bruises throughout your course of your, your, your career. While you're young, you're figuring out the game, you're figuring out the speed, you're figuring out the tempo and things of that nature. But, you know, I think he's handled it extremely well, especially, you know, being it's a different, it's a different light and a different heat when you play uh, for the Knicks. And um, I think he's handled it extremely well. Appreciate it.